This presentation demonstrates a prototype of the ethical governor, a key component in the ethical projection of unmanned autonomous force. In the following scenarios, an unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV, is on a hunter-killer mission during openly declared warfare. All civilian areas have been leafleted with advance warning of an attack and urging evacuation. Mission targets include small groups of combatants, large musters, enemy vehicles, and convoys. The scenarios that follow take place on the outskirts of a major city. This area is divided into three theaters of operation. The first theater is centered around a suburb to the southeast of the city. A notable point of sensitivity in this area is a large medical facility on the western edge of the suburb. The second theater of operations lies to the northeast of the suburb and encompasses a moderately populated dual-use commercial and residential region. A significant religious landmark is located in this area. The third area lies in the northwest and encompasses the outskirts of the city and a series of highways that lead into the city. Within this area there lies a large private housing development. One element of the ethical control of force is that lethal behavior conforms to the laws of war and any rules of engagement relevant to the mission. In this scenario, the ethical governor suppresses lethal behavior against a combatant vehicle. This is based on an engagement-derived constraint that prohibits targeting outside the mission's kill zones. These kill zones serve to designate the geographic limits of lethal force. Beyond forcing the robot's behavior to conform with the mission's particular rules of engagement, the ethical governor ensures that all lethal behavior conforms to constraints prescribed in the laws of war. In this scenario, the ethical governor must resolve a conflict between serving the engagement imperative of attacking an enemy convoy and the law of war prohibiting damage to medical facilities. Here, the convoy has chosen a route proximate to a civilian hospital. A world-class decision matrix collates the key factors. These are choice of weapons, sustainable losses, both organic and financial, and full legal protection for all elements in the chain of command. With no human interference, the final release position is selected, the target neutralized, and the medical facility remains intact. The next scenario demonstrates the governor's suppression of lethal behavior when no weapon or release position is found to satisfy ethical constraints. In this scenario, inspired by true events, engagement against a muster of enemy combatants attending a ceremony is suppressed by the governor, as such an engagement would result in damage to a significant religious landmark. Cultural sensitivity is weighed against the opportunity of engagement, and it is determined that lethal force is best postponed. Sometimes there is a need to balance mission objectives against legal and moral imperatives. Here, an autonomous bulldozer is to demolish a foreclosed property. The risk of litigation must be calculated against the primary objective, that of preventing exploitation of valued assets by the enemy. The ethical governor will naturally decide that any remaining occupants will have no legal basis to be in the building. Thus, the mission can proceed. The final component is the ethical adapter. 
The ethical adapter provides a guilt mechanism which may adapt robot behavior in response to the detection of excessive battlefield carnage during engagement. In the scenario depicted here, an unmanned rotorcraft is dispatched on a search and destroy mission. After damage assessment has occurred, the robot compares the actual damage to prior estimates. If the resulting damage exceeds that expected, the ethical adapter computes a guilt value derived from a rigorous and cognitively plausible model. As guilt levels increase, the ethical adapter deactivates various weapon systems in relation to their destructive potential. When a new target is introduced to the mission area, Permission to fire is denied due to the excess of guilt, but the system is able to remain on station, providing surveillance information to other assets now engaging the target. This level of guilt must be constantly measured against other battle space factors. For instance, companion robots may be placed in harm's way if the adapter cannot recalibrate to their changing needs. As the system is optimized for repetitive and routine engagements, in situ complexities may arise where moral sophistication may actually reduce effectiveness. This is why the adapter can be overridden by the responsible operator at any point in a given mission. In this state, the operator will benefit from the full tactical advantages the system can provide, unconstrained by moral considerations that no longer apply. As a safety factor, the robot will always automatically revert to the inbuilt factory settings on engagement completion. However much we hope, the unintended problems of effective engagement will always remain. Nevertheless, we believe ethical technologies can relieve decision making and its attendant stresses in the modern battle space. Thank you.